Hi there and good evening and welcome to the Jimbo Hannon Show from Westwood One Radio. We're at one 560 jimbo one 866 Online you'll find us at jimbohannonshow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jimbo Talks. One thing that we have been uh, talking about more, or at least hearing more about of late, has been cryptocurrency, a, a concept which uh, I'm sure eludes many of us. It certainly, uh, in, in the main, eludes me. But uh, we've been hearing more about it as the, uh, the conflict in Ukraine escalates. And so uh, to sort of lead us by the hand, uh, Daniel Baines joins us, the president of uh, commercial technology in Exeter's New York office. Uh, good evening, Mr. Baines. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? Thank you I'm very doing much well. for having me on today. Absolutely glad to have you on here. First of all, just a basic definition of term, terms, uh, cryptocurrency. Sure, yeah. A, a cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency that is secured by cryptography, uh, which, which basically makes it impossible to, to counterfeit. Uh, well, that's good that it makes it impossible to counterfeit. Now, I suppose there is a certain fiction about what actually backs up currencies such as the, the dollar, the euro, uh, the pound, the yen, the yuan, uh, what have you. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there are nation states there uh, which uh, uh, presumably back those currencies. I'm not sure who these people are behind these cryptocurrencies, but when somebody uh, hands me uh, uh, something in... Uh, in, in Bitcoin and tells me it's worth so many thousand dollars. Why should I believe that? I don't know who these people are. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. So um, this was uh, generated by the uh, private industry. And really, the, the, the value that we're attributing to cryptocurrencies is, is driven by us, right? And so it's only worth um, anything if we say it is. And so today, for example, uh, the market is saying that Bitcoin is worth thirty-eight thousand dollars, and so that is just the the market price for that specific cryptocurrency today. But again, that's driven by us. It's driven by society. Hmm. Well, there's a manhole cover not far from my home, and I say it's worth fifty thousand dollars. Want to buy it? <laughs> Not me personally, but there might be someone out there that does, and, and there you go. But, but I mean, but that, that raises a very good point. The Obviously, the inherent worth of that uh, manhole cover is is minimal. If you melted it down, I guess you're talking about uh, steel, so there's some, some intrinsic worth to that thing. But uh, certainly it ain't $50,000. And, and again, uh, just because I tell you, people would, would rightfully say, and, and who the hell are you, Jim Bohannon? Oh, well, I'm a talk show host. You know anything about finance? No. You know anything about cryptocurrencies? No. What do you know about manhole covers? Well, there's one right there, and I just said it's worth $50,000. I mean, this is the point, I think, at which which I and a lot of other people sort of, uh, th this thing breaks down in their mind. That's nice to know, and, and that it can't be counterfeited. But, you know... <laughs> I don't care if you can counterfeit this manhole cover or not. I mean, again, uh, maybe I have some kind of, uh, oh, almost naive, childlike faith in the national backing of national currencies here. Maybe I just don't understand the very, the the basic point of such currencies in an area in which nobody really backs their currencies with, let's say, gold. And in point of fact, gold doesn't have any intrinsic value really it's a good conductor of electricity but i mean i mean it's shiny and it's pretty but i mean our whole basis for a gold standard was always based on on rarity and the fact see it shines it makes a lovely crown for my head i mean i'll grant you there was never anything really rational about any of these currencies now isn't that uh, reasonable to say I think it is, and you, you bring up a couple good points there because um, you use the manhole cover example, right? Um, that is still that's something physical, there, and there is a, a an intrinsic value, as you said, in in something physical like that. And so when you when you talk about cryptocurrencies and the fact that it is a digital or, or virtual asset, um, there is really nothing physical to point to. But you know, going back to the point that you closed out with there. Um, it's it's kind of the same thing with currencies today, uh, whether it's the U.S. dollar or the, the Chinese yuan or whatever it may be. 
which used to be backed by a physical good, um, but really that's no longer the case. And so going back to the original point here, cryptocurrencies are really only worth what we assign as a value to, to that asset. And so um, if you have someone that says, yeah, this, this cryptocurrency is worth $50,000, it only is worth that if someone is willing to buy that cryptocurrency for fifty fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and, and and that is a very important point that Daniel Baines makes there. Uh, our number, by the way, one eight six six five zero Jimbo one eight six six five zero five four six two six. But uh, again, when we look at the at the value of something, for example, uh, let's say uh, let's look at a, at a terrible scenario, not a pleasant scenario. Let's say that that something causes the economy of this country to totally collapse. I mean, <laughs> maybe an electromagnetic pulse attack or something here, but something apocalyptic. Okay, and you've got uh, 50 bucks in your wallet. Okay, now that could have uh, gotten you a, a nice chunk of groceries, wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have fed your family for, uh, forever under existing costs, but it would have done, done all right. When we reach the point where a... a, a bottle of pure water, that is to say clean water that you can trust to drink, and there are maybe a dozen such bottles left on the shelf, is your 50 bucks going to buy that water? I mean, again, things would have changed rapidly under such circumstances because it is what we say it's worth. Well, that bottle of water may have been worth, oh, uh, whatever, a, a, a small number of, uh, of dollars earlier. Now it could be worth $100. Because it may be all that stands between me and my family dying of thirst. Again, it's what we say something is worth. And if, if you face a period of uh, of hyperinflation, a period of again, as I, I mentioned, a, an apocalyptic example, uh, but but nonetheless, we're getting down, I think, to the very core of of all of this, uh, are we not? I think that's right. I, I think we are getting down to the core of that, and and markets would fluctuate. And so, if you're in your example of you know the apocalyptic scenario, um, yeah, I imagine that that certain uh, core assets or or certain core commodities, rather, um, like a bottle of water, would skyrocket yeah. in in uh, what it would take to trade for that water, whether it is a, a dollar or a cryptocurrency or you know that manhole cover. Our current, we might have it wind up a currency based on the water standard, <laughs> not, not the gold standard. <laughs> but now, now that takes us again. What are the principal cryptocurrencies? We hear about Bitcoin, and honestly, I, I know there are a bunch of other uh, such terms that I, I have no idea how many there are. But uh, what are the major players in this uh, field of cryptocurrency in, in which many people, many people, including people supposedly in the know, are in fact uh, buying into whatever the value of this, these things are supposed to be. Who are the players? Sure, there, there's hundreds um, and, and probably thousands of, of players. The, the top ones, though, by market cap are uh, Bitcoin, of course, is, is right up there at number one. Um, number two is Ethereum. Uh, it's a very popular cryptocurrency, and it's really based on uh, the Ethereum platform that's been, uh, that's been built. And then as you go down the list, you'll, you'll see Tether and, um, and Ripple, Solana, uh, Cardano. These are different platforms as well um, that you're able to access and, and spend that cryptocurrency on that platform. Um, and again, though, going back to that principle here, the price and market cap of these cryptocurrencies is based on a value that we're assigning to it and so how popular that cryptocurrency is, Bitcoin being up there at number one. Now, at times of crisis, international crisis, and of course a lot of investors uh, who seem to constantly be running around screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Uh, and, and, and if you see a, a, a period of crisis, uh, even if it doesn't directly affect uh, most of us that much, and, and Ukraine does not directly affect most of us that much, but it's upsetting to investors. And so they, they will often flee uh, 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 currencies. They will flee stock markets. They may go to uh, the traditional hedges, uh, precious metals, this sort of thing. And I'm wondering, uh, do do people, or maybe we haven't even had a chance to test this yet, but do people who are involved in cryptocurrencies flee the cryptocurrencies in times of perceived crisis? 
Oh, it's interesting. Um, in the current crisis that we're seeing over in the Ukraine, um, we actually saw the opposite happen um, at, at first. So you saw the, the demand for cryptocurrency increase and the usage of cryptocurrency um, be really come to the forefront because um, allowing the, the, the cross-border transactions that Bitcoin does, for example, uh, without the, uh, the, the bank intermediary that we currently have in, in the wire system, um, allowing that immediate transaction uh, over to the Ukraine in this in this case allowed for more than a hundred million dollars in crypto donations, which is a great positive out there. Um, in in the case of the Ukraine again, one of the reasons here that we saw the the uptick was not only for the good uh, in in the form of donations, but also uh, potentially for some of the the more uh, nefarious or illicit activities. Um, so perhaps trying to get around the sanctions that were uh, being imposed by, by the U.S. and the EU on Russia. And so you, you did see an uptick in this case. Instead of fleeing the market, uh, you saw a bit more activity there. Interesting. Well, as we go to a break here, would you have predicted that? I mean, I bring to the table virtually no knowledge about this sort of thing, but I would have said, no way. No way. These things are a house of cards. Uh, uh, if uh, people flee uh, traditional currencies and the like, uh, they will flock out of this. I would, of course, been, as you just noted, uh, terribly wrong, but that's hardly surprising given what I don't know. But th would you have, have, have thought that these things would have been a haven for investors? Not originally, uh, and not a long time ago when, when this came out back, what was that, uh, 12, 13 years ago when, when Bitcoin really started. Um, so, so not way back then, but, you know, the one thing that I, that you could predict here is with the, uh, the, the weapon that the U S and, and other countries have with applying sanctions on a certain nation, um, one of the, the, I guess you can call it a benefit. One of the benefits of cryptocurrencies is that they're not regulated by any sing, single government. And so I could have predicted that that would be used more when these sanctions are applied. Very interesting. More to come. one 560 jimbo one 560 I got smarter in the last 10 minutes. I hope you did, too. But uh, give us a call. one 560 jimbo one 560 with Daniel Baines of uh, Exeger, based in uh, New York. He focuses on the firm's financial investigations, financial crime compliance, and technology solutions. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. Back in a moment. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar twenty. So am I because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar twenty because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. Age sixty five or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar twenty pneumococcal twenty valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Prevnar twenty is approved for adults to help prevent infections from twenty strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar twenty if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower risk response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I want to be able to keep my plans. So I'm asking my doctor about getting vaccinated with Prevnar20. Today on Hey Culligan, sustainability and better water. Here's Sam. Hey Culligan, I'm really into sustainability. My clothes, my utensils, my food. But how do I get more sustainability from my water? Super question, Sam. And the answer is an always-on drinking water system from Culligan, which helps eliminate the equivalent of 15 billion single-use plastic bottles a year. Whoa, that's a ton of sustainability. 416,000 tons, Sam, and we're already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test with the local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. I need tech that leaves my hands free during my work day. 
and my workout. It's possible at Staples. I need tech for my home office that makes it easier to work from home. Also possible because your local Staples store has the innovative tech and tools you need to take on the future of work, all at great prices. And right now, Apple AirPods Pro are only $199, a savings of $50. Explore what's new right now at Staples, the working and learning store. Ends 312. Limit two while supplies last. Research shows that people remember radio ads with a booming voice that emphasizes all the main points. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual Insurance Company customizes your home insurance so you only pay for what you need. That part is super important. Here's one with a booming voice. I'm emphasizing everything. Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance. Like a page with every word highlighted. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Dirty exterior? Don't scrub it. Wet it and forget it. Wet and forget, the easy outdoor cleaner. Wet and forget works over time with Mother Nature to eliminate unsightly black and green stains on the exterior of your home with no scrubbing, power washing, or bleach. Use wet and forget on all your outdoor surfaces, including decks, siding, roofs, and patios. Wet and forget's available in a concentrate or extreme reach hose-in. Purchase wet and forget in store or online at Lowe's, Menards, Ace, or Walmart. Jimbo Hannah Show at 1 866 Jimbo, 1 866 505 4626. Our guest, Daniel Baines, is president of Commercial Technology in Exiger's New York office. What exactly is the firm Exiger, E X I G E R? Yeah, so Exiger is a, a risk management firm um, with a mission to make the world a safer place uh, to do business through the use of our technology. And so our, our technology is really. Uh, an automation tool to help companies understand risk by doing uh, due diligence. All right, very good. Here's a call from uh, Kevin in uh, Burlingame, California. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for taking my call. Uh -huh. um, I have some comments about cryptocurrency and the money supply and um, and some of the issues. Now, um, I've been programming for 20 years i was doing some bitcoin mining when it first came out and also got a master's degree in finance and i realized that once i understood what the money supply was all about about governments printing money and being able to back up um, the flow of transactions with the law because you know governments have a monopoly on violence within their jurisdiction and this is one of the reasons the u.s dollar has been so prominent over the past 60 years because we're a country of laws that's why the oligarchs take the money from Europe or out of Russia and put it in the West. Um, and that's the big problem with cryptocurrency is that there is no arbiter of fraud, right? And a lot of the transactions are non-reversible and sometimes anonymous. And, and so essentially without the ability to have a government back up the uh, reduction of fraud, you end up with a society that's almost like anarchy. Um, but I wanted to share that with you. Well, yeah, and I'd like our guests to respond. Sure, yeah, it's an interesting point. Um, and, you know, I, I did start off uh, the the call with the definition there and, and specifically highlighted the, the counterfeit point um, because cryptocurrency does sometimes get a, a bad rap uh, in that it it is perceived to be used for fraudulent purposes uh, only or, or largely, right? Um, that, that It's come a long way. Since uh, since the Silk Road, though, and um, and there's actually a, a, a good amount of benefits um, around the fraud point that you're mentioning that cryptocurrency provides. Is it a it favorite is, of people who uh, want to launder money? You know the the, the anonymous point that uh, that uh, the calling user uh, raised there is an important one because when um, when cryptocurrencies or, or the users of, of cryptocurrencies were anonymous, yes, it, it was a, a much more preferred uh, asset to be using to make uh, purchases or launder money. Um, and now it's the, the industry has come a long way to make sure that 
a proper due diligence is conducted on the customers that are uh, using cryptocurrencies. So that has significantly cut down uh, the amount of uh, capability to launder money that, that was there before. What about the non-reversible part? I mean, once you make, what, a cryptocurrency transaction, uh, you're stuck with that? I mean, you can't turn around and, and sell it elsewhere? I'm not sure what that means. So, yeah, non-reversible. So um, cryptocurrencies are logged on a uh, decentralized network. So it's a, a blockchain network. And once a, a transaction goes through, it's correct that that, that transaction is uh, posted on publicly on the the uh, blockchain network and is therefore not going to be able to be reversed. Now, you could, of course, transact once again to reverse that transaction. Um, so let's say, uh, Jim, you, you sold me that manhole cover. I gave you a Bitcoin and then it turns <laughs> out that you want it back. Um, I can then... Uh, Give you you give me back the Bitcoin and and I give you back the manhole cover. Yeah. So so, so it is reversible that way, in that sense. Is. If you have a brand new transaction, you can reverse the previous transaction. Correct, but it is posted yeah. to the public ledger, and it is right. permanent once that transaction goes through. Okay, very good. All right, one uh, eight six six five zero Jimbo. Our number one eight six six five zero five four six two six. We'll get the calls after the break here, but just very briefly here. Uh, how do the drug cartels feel about cryptocurrency? They felt much better about it a few years ago. Um, now there's uh, there is more regulation that's coming down on these um, crypto exchanges that provide the ability to, to transact cryptocurrencies. Um, there is still the ability to uh, circumvent the controls that are in place by having what's called a, a cold wallet. So it's, it's, it wouldn't be on an exchange. It would be kept actually yeah. off of the Internet completely. Um, but the the exchanges that are out there, which okay. is going to be well, the uh, before you we 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 got to have that that explanation coming up in just this week in Atlanta history, March fourteenth, nineteen twenty one, the man who created the Chick fil A sandwich was born, Truett S. Kathy. Kathy inspired others by his personal work ethic based on the biblical principle. We're created for the purpose of giving. That's something we should believe and something we should practice. Truett's legacy: emphasizing people over profit and filling philanthropically giving largely on behalf of disadvantaged children. And that's This Week in Atlanta History, brought to you by AM 920, The Answer. Everything is up for grabs, and the stakes are your future and your children's safety and prosperity. America First with Sebastian Gorka, weekdays at 3 p.m. on AM 920, The Answer. Real news, real facts. On AM 920, The Answer. With SRN News, I'm Ron DeRostra. By a 68-31 vote, the Senate this evening gave its approval to a $13.6 billion emergency package of military and humanitarian aid for besieged Ukraine and its European allies. The money, part of a $1.5 trillion government-wide spending bill. President Biden reportedly will announce tomorrow the U.S., along with the European Union and the Group of Seven, will move to revoke most favored nation trade status for Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. Stripping most favored nation status would allow the U.S. and allies to impose tariffs on Russian imports. Saudi Arabia says it rescued two young American women in Yemen in a joint special operation mission with the United States. Saudi Defense Ministry says the women, both teenagers, were being held by Iran-backed Houthi rebels in the Yemeni capital of Sana'a. This is SRN News. What is a neighbor? This is Greg Trzynski at the Original Mattress Factory. We believe a neighbor is more than just someone who lives nearby. A good neighbor treats you with honesty and respect and works with you to build a better community. At OMF, you can expect to be treated like a neighbor we offer our locally made, hand-built mattresses and box springs at a factory direct value because we know you deserve the best. Visit an OMF location today to experience the original mattress factory difference for yourself. AM 920 is the answer. Your answer on weather. Quite a few changes on the way the next couple of days. We're going to start off wet, even a few thunderstorms by Friday afternoon, Friday night, pretty mild. 
then blustery and sharply colder as we start the weekend. Overnight cloudy, 48, chance of a shower high of 61 Friday. Rain and thunderstorms likely Friday night. Some could be strong. From the Weather Channel here in Atlanta, I'm meteorologist Mark Thibodeau. From the AM 920 The Answer Studios in Buckhead, it's 48 degrees. Back to the Jimbo Hannon Show at one 560 jimbo one 866 We've had no takers for my $50,000 manhole cover, so I'm, I'm going to give you a reduced price of, uh, of uh, 42 5 But uh, in the meantime, we'll continue our discussion with our guest, Daniel Baines, who actually brings some intelligence and uh, knowledge to this discussion, uh, the president of commercial technology in the Exeger New York office, and a call from uh, Dawn in Jamestown, New York. Hello, Dawn. Jimbo, yeah. I just your manhole cover, you know what? I'd rather go buy the manhole cover for fifty. <laughs> it seems like a big giant scheme doing this. That is somebody's getting rich off of doing that. Yeah, well it's a lovely manhole cover, but uh, anyway, to the uh, the important stuff at hand here. What do you have for our guest? I just wanna know it's just like a you know, the rich get richer by doing the money like a pyramid thing. All right. Is there anything shady about the inherent concept here, uh, the pyramid schemes and uh, other uh, other types of scams? I'm sure that for for those who are are not familiar with the concept and some of the digital underpinnings of it at all, and that would include me. Uh, you have to wonder that. I don't know that we have any 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 actual basis for saying that, but but we wonder: is this some? Because I think there is this inherent distrust of people with money who play games with money. Maybe unfair, Daniel, but I think it's out there. There are. Well, you're right, uh, and and there are um, big risks in the cryptocurrency space with with scammers um it, it, if you would have heard of the uh something called an ico it's initial coin offering um more than two thousand of those have failed over the past few years by way of a scam or, or just complete abandonment of a project and it it's compared to the likes of the uh the internet bubble right so when when internet stocks came out um, you basically go out with a an idea that gets funded, and then you take the money and run. And and that has happened in the cryptocurrency market a, a decent amount. Is there any kind of, of regulation that applies to cryptocurrencies? You note that, that these are, are international. They, they transcend national boundaries. But, I mean, is there anything like a, I don't know, a, a consortium of, uh, of major economic powers or... Uh, or the uh, the World Trade Organization, or somebody. There are international financial institutions. Is anybody trying to get a handle on these things? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, not only are there uh, partnerships across the the nations, uh, but there's also partnerships in the industry itself that, that are trying to do more and do better um, to make sure that they're protecting the consumer. And uh, just by way of example. Um, there is a, an 18-member uh, Travel Rule Universal Solution Technology Initiative. Uh, the, the acronym there is TRUST. Um, for, for 18 virtual asset service providers that are looking to proactively um, basically regulate themselves and make sure that, um, that they are delivering a safe, asset for uh for their consumers is this a fox in the in the hen house kind of thing or, or do they seem to be serious <laughs> it is not they, they're they're following what um what the financial services firms do as well okay. which is basically getting their due diligence and knowing who is transacting so that you don't have yeah. those drug cartels and so forth gotcha all right uh, mick in akron ohio next hello mick to me um so with all the talk of uh, getting rid of the, the, like cash and moving to a digital currency and cryptocurrency hype, I'm concerned that this could be a national security issue. Like, what happens if the internet goes out? I mean, 
nobody's going to be able to do any transactions. I was just wondering what your guys' thoughts are on that. That's a very interesting thought. Of course, there, there are no, uh, no, no Bitcoin bills that you can stick in your wallet, uh, are there, uh, uh, Mr. Baines? Uh, there's no bills, um, but there are those cold wallets. Right, so um, it, it looks a little bit different than, than a, a dollar does. It, it looks more like a USB, um, and so you would hypothetically be able to transact still in those. Now, um, as a national security risk, uh, it's an interesting point. Uh, that's something that President Biden brought up in his yeah. executive order that he just signed yesterday as one of the, the things to investigate further before taking any, uh, any action. We hear talk about uh, national digital currencies or uh, talk about a cashless society. Is that directly related to what we're talking about? It certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as part of that, that same executive order signed yesterday, um, the introduction of the idea of a, uh, a national uh, cryptocurrency was brought up and, and, and action to be taken to see how feasible it would be to put one of those in place in the United States. Okay. Uh, BK in Brentwood, California for Daniel Baines. Good evening. Hey, good evening, Jimbo. And what's on your mind tonight, uh, Daniel, or BK, pardon me? Yeah, it's very firstly, congratulations. It's a very, very knowledgeable and uh, informational show. So mm. thank you so much for that. Uh, secondly, uh, with the with the cryptocurrency, I always have a thought in my mind, like you know, uh, since this currency fluctuates really, really lot, how it could become a like a popular and mean of this transaction, while if after some time a one side of trader like the counterparty have to suffer a loss because of that fluctuation, and there is no back by any kind of government or anything. How it could be, could become such a fancy and such a prize crazy thing? All right, uh, go ahead, uh, Daniel. Sure. Yeah. So um, the the benefits there that made it uh, become adopted so quickly are um, the lower fees and the availability of those cross border type transactions. Um, and so, yes, it is. It's fluctuating heavily, right? It is, it's a volatile asset right now because of the, the popularity that it's been gaining. Um, but the the benefits there are are not only the cross border transactions, but the way uh, that the distributed ledger operates to be able to record these transactions, right? It's basically cutting out the middleman, with the middleman being the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, more to come, more calls, one eight six six five O jimbo and we'll be back in just a moment. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents... And Doug. Check it out, Lemu, a roadside carnival. Step right up, folks. Test your strength. Come see the fire-breathing baby. <laughs> Let's fan out and tell people that Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Look, an emu wearing sunglasses. Lemu. Famous. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. If you have ever thought about remodeling your bathroom but were worried it would take too long or cost too much, then stop worrying. Right now, Jacuzzi Bath Remodel has designed a collection of high-quality custom products and perfected the one-day remodeling experience so you can enjoy your new bathroom faster than ever before. It's a worry-free bath remodel from the most trusted brand name in the business, Jacuzzi. For a virtual or in-home appointment, call 800-826-9895. That's 800-826-9895. 800-826-9895. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes. I get real cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make $200 to $300 this year. Wow. 
That's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now to earn cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code CAR for 25 cents a gallon or more cash back on your first tank. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, to PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code CAR to earn 25 cents a gallon or more on your first tank. That's code CAR. Brightpath is the highest rated lender in Georgia. Brightpath has a 4.9 rating out of 5 with over 300 reviews. They don't charge lending fees or origination fees. Brightpath is local. Unlike the guys that are not local, Brightpath doesn't charge you any lender fees. Save thousands. Get an experienced loan officer who has been in the business for over a decade. Brightpath has a ton of experience and Brightpath has a seamless process without any hassles. Brightpath is your partner through the process. High home values, near historic rates. Every dollar you pay towards fees is less money you are getting with cash out. 1200 Ashwood Parkway, Suite 200, Atlanta, Georgia, 30338. NMLS number 177208, Georgia license 24109. NMLS, consumeraccess.org. 132. Welcome back to the Jim Bohanna Show as we uh, try to get our brains wrapped around the concept of digital currencies and cryptocurrencies. And uh, we're doing so with Daniel Baines, the president of commercial technology in the office of Exeger in New York City. As we go to the calls here, uh, is there a difference between the term digital currency and cryptocurrency? It's largely one and the same, Jim. Uh, and so... Um, Really, the, those two terms are used almost interchangeably. Okay, very good. Here's Mike in Denver. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. Thank you for taking my call. And Mr. Baines, thank you for being here as well. Um, so interesting story that broke out this week. Um, two people in New York State allegedly defrauded more than $124 million from nearly 20,000 investors from a new form of crypto called Ormius Coin. And where the alleged fraud came in is when they claimed this whole cryptocurrency operation was backed by a $250 million digital mining operation. Now, the only problem was that the mining operation did not, did not exist. So. The problem here um, is, as you said, that fraud in this industry is existing. It's going to continue to exist. So my question would be, when it comes to the digital mining aspect of this, how do you think specifically digital mining operations can be verified in the future so this type of thing doesn't happen again? Yeah, and I have to add a caveat to that. I'm not sure what digital mining is. It reminds me of some people with uh, little rail cars underground looking for ones and zeros everywhere. But, uh, uh, again, uh, you tell us, Daniel. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. So um, digital mining is the process of, of basically uh, solving complex mathematical uh, problems in order to post transactions to the blockchain. And with that, you get you get a, a, a small um, amount of cryptocurrency for your efforts, right? Um, now, in this in this case, this came out a couple of days ago, um, and the SEC is prosecuting the case. Uh, there, you're right. There, there was there was nothing to back up the statements that were made, and it wasn't entirely a fraud. Um, again, that goes back to to really the the age of. Um, the internet stocks, right? When when they first came out early days, it, it was those statements to say, yes, we have this idea. Yes, we have this asset. But you have to verify it. And so um, going forward, it, investors should be aware that those types of due diligence activities to verify that what, what a company is saying is true should be conducted before making any significant investments. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Daniel in Wichita. Hello. Hi, Jim. Uh, hi, Daniel Baines. I mm -hmm. have two questions to ask you. Okay. First, 
Do you think that Bitcoin has come about just because of uh, the world has went to fiat money uh, and that uh, El Salvador has adopted it as, as its national currency? Uh, my second question uh, is that uh, our, our faith in whatever currency we have, any of the currency around the world, is what determines that value of that currency. And if that faith is lost, uh, and they don't have the gold, silver, hard, tangible assets or the military to back their currency, then it becomes uh, worthless. All right. Thoughts on that, uh, Daniel? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's an interesting point about El Salvador uh, and the fact that they're accepting uh, Bitcoin. Um, Have they and, abandoned and their national currency, whatever it was, the peso or whatever? They, they've, they've accepted Bitcoin, which no other country has as their, as their currency. Ah, okay, go and ahead. So, um, other, other uh, countries have actually made their own central bank digital currency to roll out. The Bahamas is there, uh, Dominica, Grenada. Um, and China's just launched there. So, so the digital currencies for each of these countries uh, is, is also progressive. Um, the, the second point that you raised there around uh, the A faith in currency, yeah. Yeah, and, and the military to back it up and so forth, really, that, that's generally more driven by trade. And so the U.S. Uh, is, is largely accepted. Um, and viewed as a, a, a currency to be trusted because of how much trade was conducted with the U.S. And so it became a preferred currency because a lot of people were using it for, for trade purposes. Uh, now, that is shifting to some extent, and, and you do see countries like China doing uh, very active in, in trade and potentially the yuan becoming uh, something a, a little bit more um, accepted uh, more broadly. And so, could, could it, yes, it, the military point does feed in there, but but also trade factors in as well. We refer to a, some, something as being a, a, the reserve currency. The dollar holds that status. Could a could a, a digital currency someday become a reserve currency? It, it's an interesting point. Uh, I think it could be eventually. And, and that's right. The, the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency today. Um, that could potentially shift as well, perhaps to another country or a, a country's okay. currency or a digital currency. All right. Uh, Robert in Charleston, South Carolina. Good evening. I just wanted to say that, you know, being a little older and not being familiar with the, the electronic currencies, I would be a little worried about what could happen. You know, you know, one minute you have millions, the next minute you have nothing, literally. And uh, but, but with stamps, you know, and on, letter, on letters, in other words, covers is what they call them, they, they have a certain value that, that, that unless the letter gets burned or something like that, it'll always have – there's, there's very, very little chance that, that it'll ever – go down to zero anywhere near it some of those letters they go for about 8.1 million euros and um that's about somewhere around 12 and a half million dollars for the most expensive ones for the mauritius islands like the mauritius red stamp right. things like well that. Let, let's say let's say i've got one of these really valuable stamps and i'm dying of thirst and uh, i'm talking to a guy who's got some nice water to drink uh the value of those stamps just went way down. Maybe uh, a a bottle of water, uh, Daniel. Yeah, it, and and that's right. It, it goes yeah. back to that original concept right. of um, okay. the the assets only could be worth what other people are are going to buy it yeah. for or say that it's worth exactly. to make that market. Yeah, more to come. Back in a moment. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar 20 because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. Age 65 or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. 
Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I want to be able to keep my plans. So I'm asking my doctor about getting vaccinated with Prevnar20. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents... Doug. Check it out, Lemu. A roadside carnival. Step right up, folks. Test your strength. Come see the fire-breathing baby. <laughs> Let's fan out and tell people that Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Look! An emu wearing sunglasses! Lemu, you're famous. <laughs> only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Today on Hey Culligan, soft water, cleaner environment. What do you say, Greg? Hey Culligan, are you saying if I have a Culligan high-efficiency water softener, I'm also helping the environment? It sounds like you're saying it, Greg, and yes, you are, because with a Culligan high-efficiency water softener, you'll use less detergent, soap, and harsh chemicals, and that's good for the planet. Now you're saying it. You bet I am, Greg. Soft water and a cleaner environment is already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Who can you trust in big media? A recent study finds Americans don't trust big media, and 65% of Republicans don't trust them at all. Now, Newsmax has become a trusted source for millions. They go to Newsmax.com for breaking news and watch Newsmax TV for the latest from Washington, New York, Hollywood, and the world. Download the free Newsmax app on your smartphone and watch it anytime, anywhere. Nielsen recently reported that almost 7 million cable viewers watch Newsmax, but not Fox News. Americans really are making the switch to Newsmax. Start every day with Wake Up America and Rob Finnerty. And watch the Newsmax team at night with Eric Bowling, Sean Spicer and Lindsey Keith, Greg Kelly, Stinchfield, Jen Pellegrino, Rob Schmidt and more. Every weekend, tune in for Huckabee, Diamond and Silk, Dick Morris, Wendy Bell, and more. Already 20 million made the switch and watch Newsmax all the time. Try it. You may never go back. Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannah Show at 1 866 50 Jimbo, 1 866 505 4626. Our guest, Daniel Baines, is the president of commercial technology at Exeger's New York office for learning about cryptocurrencies. And if you're on the line, we will get to your call because our guest has graciously agreed to extend into the next hour. Right now, let's talk to Denise in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. Good evening. Hi, um, this is a good one for you. Um, every day I stop in for a cup of coffee at a little um, donut shop, mm -hmm. and um, I I noticed a couple of days ago that next to the ATM was a device that looked like an ATM, but it said Bitcoin. I was wondering, uh, when I asked the guy, how does this work? And he says, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it supposed to what be able to exchange something? I mean, you put in a, a buck and it gives you out an equivalent. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, since I'm not sure that Bitcoin is printed on anything. But I, do you know, Daniel, what, what such a thing would be? I mean... I'm not sure if they have automated, uh, let's say, uh, oh, let's say Japanese yen to dollar uh, machines. I saw, you know, I saw one of those machines a long time ago. Um, I, I didn't use it myself, so I'm not sure what comes out of it. I imagine it would be some kind of a, a, a cold wallet. Um, it, and yes, I, I would imagine that it is an exchange. So put in your, you know, ten bucks or whatever it may be, and and you get the equivalent amount in Bitcoin. Yeah, but of course, uh, of course, that value changes. Every second, does it not? <laughs> That's correct. It does fluctuate a pretty good amount. So, so if uh, I had gotten, if I had gotten that that little slip of paper at the beginning of this hour, the, the, what's printed on that piece of paper no longer reflects reality. Well, you'll you'll be holding that asset, and and it will be appreciating or depreciating with the market. All right. Well, boy, uh, let's go to Mike in Oxnard, California. Hello. 
Hello, Jim. Um, more or less a question in regards to uh, not necessarily the cryptocurrency, but the digital uh, currency, the digital dollar. Um, I'm concerned that maybe this is, uh, you know, Big Brother 2.0, where when the government doesn't agree with your points of view or your political points of view, that they could just shut off your money and say, you know, this guy is, uh, you know, not saying things that are kosher to the political climate. Uh, what are your comments? What are your thoughts on that? All right. Is this a means by which government could have more leverage over our lives? Or are we reading too much into this, uh, Daniel? Sure. Yeah, sure. So um, it, it's a good question. So uh, it's I guess there's potential for it because there is a uh, – uh, the records are there, right? The, the records are public, and there, there's potentially access to be able to do that. But to be frank, they already have the ability to do that today. I, I wouldn't say for political reasons or anything like that, but – um, they they are able to freeze assets that the bank holds for for certain individuals, and so that ability is there today. Um, the, the the way to avoid it, obviously, would be that that cold wallet type of uh, of solution there, because it's it's completely removed from the internet. Yeah. Uh, should there be more regulation, or, or does regulation interfere with the, the point of digital currency? There needs to be. And, um, and the industry wants it, to be honest. Um, something like the executive order that came out yesterday is a, a welcome message by the industry. Um, it, it's, it's proving that the cryptocurrency market is here to stay, and it's, it's almost an acceptance. And so, yes, I, I think that regulation is required in order to progress cryptocurrency, and, and the industry would, would agree with that. All right. Now, again, if you're on the line, stay on, because uh, our guest, Daniel Baines, will, in fact, be taking your calls after the break at the top of the hour. one 866 jimbo one 866 4626 We're learning more about digital currencies. And you may like them or dislike them, but don't ignore them, because it ain't going anywhere. More to come. I'm Jim Bohannon on Westwood One. History. Tradition. Excitement. Find it all at the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. The fans are on their feet, and we're ready to race them in Atlanta. NASCAR's biggest names at Georgia's fastest track. Don't miss your chance to be part of history. Experience the new Atlanta Motor Speedway at the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 on March 20th. Tickets start at just $39. Call 877-9AMS-TICKS or visit AtlantaMotorSpeedway.com. Hugh Hewitt. This is where they have a lot of manufacturing and shipping and more than 100 new cases. Mike Gallagher. The report doesn't claim that anything's illegal about it. The most intelligent names and talk here on Atlanta's conservative station. AM 920, The Answer. The AM 920, The Answer, comment line. Here's something for people going to an upcoming Trump rally. Who's the leader of the club that wants to keep us free? D-O-N-A-L-D-T-R-U-M-P, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Forever let us wave our colors high. Come one, come all, and stand up tall and fight for liberty. D-O-N-A-L-D-T-R-U-M-P. That may just bring a smile to President Trump and perhaps irritate the left. The AM 920, The Answer, comment line. Now on HD Radio at 104.7 FM, HD3. WFSH, HD3, Athens, Atlanta. This is WGKA Atlanta. Atlanta's home for conservative talk. AM 920, The Answer. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm Ron DeRockstra. By a 68-31 vote, the Senate Thursday evening approved the $13.6 billion emergency package of military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine and its European allies, the money part of a $1.5 trillion government-wide spending bill. Meanwhile, refugees continue to pour out of Ukraine while a Russian convoy appears to have redeployed. Satellite images from above Ukraine appear to show a 40-mile convoy of Russian military vehicles has broken up, with armored units spotted near the airport north of Kiev and some of the vehicles moving into forested areas. 
U.S. officials said Ukrainian troops have been targeting the convoy with anti-tank missiles. In his nightly video address, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, denied Russia's accusations that Ukraine is preparing an attack using chemical or biological weapons, saying it's a bad sign. If you want to know Russia's plans, he says, they are what Russia accuses others of. He said 100,000 people have been evacuated during the last two days from seven cities under blockade, but that Russian tanks attacked an area of Mariupol that was supposed to be a humanitarian corridor. UN officials estimated that more than 2.3 million people have fled Ukraine and that 1.9 million are displaced within their own country. Jennifer King, Washington. Also at SRNnews.com, President Biden reportedly will announce Friday the U.S. along with the European Union and group of seven countries will move to revoke most favored nation trade status for Russia over its invasion that would allow the U.S. and the allies to impose tariffs on Russian imports. After 99 days, the baseball lockout's over. Commissioner Rob Manfred says players will benefit from several pieces of the new contract. They talked about pay for young players. You know, we had a historic increase in the minimum salary, whole new form of compensation in terms of the bonus pool. They were worried about service time manipulation. You know, the first ever type of agreement on that issue. Never done it before. Opening day, April 7th. More at townhall.com. The following is not an actor, but a real-life story from Trinity Debt Management. The credit card debt happened when my daughter was born. I was using one credit card account to roll over into another credit card account, and it was snowballing. If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-990-6976. When I first called Trinity, the representative understood the need based on the situation. There were great people to work with. From the first phone call that I made, they had me on a track to mitigate the credit card debt. Trinity will consolidate your accounts into one easy to manage monthly payment, reduce your interest and possibly improve your credit score. You'll save thousands. Working with Trinity gave me the ability to save thousands of dollars. My name's Doug and thanks to Trinity, I'm debt free for keeps. Call Trinity at 1-800-990-6976. That's 1-800-990-6976. Jesse Smollett's been sentenced in connection with his conviction and lying on staging his own hate crime. I'm innocent! A relatively stiff sentence and a temper tantrum ending the Jesse Smollett case. Cook County Judge James Lynn has sentenced the disgraced Empire actor to 180 days in jail, then 30 months probation. Must also pay $120,000 restitution for staging his own hate crime. After the decision, Smollett told the judge he was innocent, repeating some of the same claims he made on the stand, claims the judge did dismissed as pure perjury. As the hearing in it, Smollett left in the custody of the sheriff, still declaring his innocence. I could have said that I was guilty a long time ago. I'm Oscar Wells Gabriel. Birthday's Thursday, TV journalist Sam Donaldson turned 88. Singer Bobby McFerrin still happy at 72. Movie director Jerry Zucker, airplane ghost, 72 as well. News and analysis, townhall.com. Nestle USA plans to build a $675 million plant in Metro Phoenix. The plant will produce beverages, including oat milk coffee creamers. The company says the factory will eventually employ more than 350 people in the suburb of Glendale. It's slated to open in 2024. Nestle, which makes the Coffee Mate brand of creamers, is in the midst of an early $3 billion expansion of its U.S. production capacity. The plans for Arizona are fueled by a rapid rise in consumer demand for plant-based products. The project is eligible for up to $7 million in state tax subsidies if Nestle follows through on the commitment for 350 jobs. Keith Peters reporting. Goldman Sachs says it is closing its operations in Russia entirely, making it the first major Wall Street bank to do so since Russia invaded Ukraine 16 days ago. More stories at townhall.com. I'm Ron DeRockstra. Hi, friends. This is Katie Pavlich from townhall.com. The liberal media and big tech are working overtime to promote the left's anti-American agenda to silence me and the reporters on our team at Town Hall. We must bring the truth to the American people free from the spin of big media and the censorship of big tech companies. Town Hall covers the news that matters, exposing the COVID lies, the leftist rot and crime surge in our cities, the illegal alien crisis at our southern border, and all of Joe Biden's unconstitutional overreach, including the critical race theory attacks on our children and grandchildren by school boards working with the Department of Justice. 
Visit townhall.com each morning, afternoon, and night for the truth as my team investigates the Biden administration, their big media friends, and leftist activists. With your support, we can keep holding government bureaucrats and their allies in the media accountable. Visit townhall.com today to join the fight. The fight for our nation starts with townhall.com. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Your answer on weather. Quite a few changes on the way the next couple of days. We're going to start off wet, even a few thunderstorms by Friday afternoon, Friday night, pretty mild. Then blustery and sharply colder as we start the weekend. Overnight cloudy, 48. Chance of a shower high of 61 Friday. Rain and thunderstorms likely Friday night. Some could be strong. From the Weather Channel here in Atlanta, I'm meteorologist Mark Thibodeau. From the AM 920, the answer studios in Buckhead, it's 48 degrees. For freedom. We are born free and we will stay free. We are AM 920, the answer. Hi there, and a good evening. Welcome to the Jimbo Hannon Show from Westwood One Radio. We're at 1-866-50-JIMBO, 1-866-505-4626. Online, find us at jimbohannonshow.com. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jimbo Talks. And we're taking more calls for our guest, who graciously agreed to stay over into this hour. Daniel Baines, the president of commercial technology in the New York office of Exeger, a risk management firm. He's been explaining cryptocurrencies to dodos like me and smarter people like you, uh, such as Kurt, for example, in Jamestown, New York. Hello, Kurt. Do we have Kurt? Um, Mr. Banks, I, I have a question for you that's going to border on Egghead, but I, I can't seem to figure it out. Okay. Um, when you are mining for cryptocurrency, you're in a competition to be the first to solve something and win. When you are recording cryptocurrencies for the chain, how does that cross over to mining? And my question then goes on on a societal basis. Why would you need a currency that has so much volatility that you have to instantly take it in and out of the wallet to preserve value, to convert it to some other source? Thank All you right. very much. And, and, and as a lead in to answering those points, uh, Daniel, uh, how volatile is cryptocurrency? Uh, so it is, it, it's incredibly volatile. Over the past few months, um, Bitcoin, I'll just use Bitcoin as the example here, but Bitcoin has fluctuated. It was all the way up at, at $60,000 per Bitcoin, and it's gone down to $30,000 per Bitcoin. And so that type of volatility is, um, is intense, and it's going to be more so than other currencies, other uh, fiat currencies that, that you would be used to. Boy, volatility, that, that means a lot. I mean, that, that's an automatic huge black mark against this. Potentially. Um, people use it as a, a storage of value. Uh, and so often as an investment as opposed to a, uh, a, a dollar, for example, or a, a yuan. Yeah. Um, and so it, it is viewed as, as an investment uh, by a lot of people as okay. opposed to a, a currency itself. All right. Right, well then let's look at the other points that Kurt brought up. Oh, sure, yes. On the, the, the mining part, the, the, uh, the calculation that is solved or the problem that's solved during the mining process actually posts the, uh, the transaction to the blockchain. So that, that, that is one and the same. Uh, the mining process where you get that, that small uh, amount of cryptocurrency for your effort to solve that calculation is the mechanism that places that uh, that transaction or that block in the block train. All right. Uh, let's go to Brady in Las Vegas. Hello. How are you doing, gentlemen? We're fine. Thank you. Uh, i got to ask you, how, what, do you, what do you think about using a volcano to mine cryptocurrency like they're doing in El Salvador? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Not what was quite the question, sure. Brady? Uh, using a volcano to mine cryptocurrency? I'm not sure what that means exactly, but maybe that was meant as a joke. I'm not sure. 